Hey everybody, it's James here from the Sawyer Family Reviews channel, and today we're taking a look at figure number one in the DC Collectibles Batman animated line, the new Batman Adventures, Batman. Let's check him out. Let's start with a look at the figure in the packaging first before we tear him out of there. Okay, so the new Batman Adventures figures from DC Collectibles came in this blue style packaging. Everything that was Batman animated came in a red style packaging. So we had a card back that had the characters on the back in their silhouette form. The new Batman Adventures logo, Batman's name, figure number one. In the back of the card has the silhouettes of Nightwing, Robin, and Batman from the new Batman Adventures. Uh, pretty simple packaging. I wish it was the kind that you could open and close instead of just tearing it open because that's what I'm about to have to do right now. Let's tear him open and check him out. All right, so we have Batman out of the box here. I've also brought in the first release of this figure to illustrate this peg hold deal. Now, on Superman the Animated Series Lois two-pack video thing I just did, I spoke about how we originally did three reviews from this line, Batman, Catwoman, and I think it was Two-Face. And those reviews all had these peg holes. So it's kind of neat that I'm going back and redoing Batman because I can show now this change. The same with Catwoman, I'll be able to show the change. Two-Face is just going to be a straight-up redo of the old video. But the first wave of DC Collectibles Batman animated figures all had these peg holes. So you had these peg holes at the front of the thighs, and you had these peg holes at the side of the knee. And all of the first wave figures had them. They were kind of distracting for the sculpt. Um, the Batman and Catwoman, though, got reissued without these peg holes anymore. So there's no peg hole at the front of the thigh, and there's no peg hole at the side of the knee, because moving into the second wave and going forward, this was no longer a thing. They didn't do these peg holes anymore. Two-Face and Mr. Freeze, they stayed the same. They didn't get a reissue with these better thighs and better legs getting rid of these peg holes. But back then, this is all we had when the first wave hit. It was the reissues of Batman and Catwoman that got rid of the peg holes. So if you see a figure in the package and it has these peg holes... That means it's a first-run figure. I would look for these. I would get the one without the peg holes. It's just a better-looking figure overall. But since I had this figure, I thought I'd bring it out and show you the differences. Plus, since Batman comes with two capes, I could show you both capes at once. The figure comes packaged with this cape on, which is the thrown-over-the-shoulders look. So that one's a little more, a less restrictive when it comes to articulation, which we'll look at this figure when it comes to articulation. And then we've got this version, which I think is cooler looking, where it drapes over the shoulders. And so it's a little bit more, this one's a little more dynamic looking, but this, I think, gives an overall better look on the shelf, this version of the cape. Uh, since we're talking about things the figures come with, let's look at the accessories and such. He comes with this little grapple here, and the front part of it comes off. So that detaches, and then he's got also a hand where this is permanently molded in, because it's tough to get this kind of hand hold on a standard, like, hand, where you can kind of wedge that into there. And this one also has the front piece that's removable. So that's kind of cool that they give you this, this inclusion here, where it's permanently sculpted into the hand, so Batman can do that thing where he kind of does the Vulcan death grip around a grapple. Uh, he also comes with a Batarang. And it's the Bat new Batman Adventures design of the Bat Batarang, where it's very sharp-looking. It keeps wanting to focus on the Batmans back there. And there you go. And there is a set of hands that are sculpted to hold that. So we've got a right and a left that are both sculpted to hold that Batarang. I don't really need to show you the other one, but there it is. Uh, then we've got a set of open hands that are slightly gripping. We've got a set of, like, straight-up gripping hands, which look like they're made to, like, grab the steering wheel or something like that. Um, and then that's it, right? I said the slightly open? Yeah. So he's got a total of the set that he has on, which is the fists, and then two, three. So he's got four sets of hands and then the one that's holding the grapple gun. The other accessory that's included is the stand. I'm going to say this repeatedly. I really love the idea of these. I love this turnaround design on the stand, but the execution is kind of poor. You've got this peg that has a notch on one side that fits into the notch there. If I can even do it right. There we go. And then this little slidey thing. This one's at least tight. 
Now, these things break kind of easy, too. I've seen a lot of these loose that are just broken. And then the, the clips just kind of go in. There's not much resistance. They did improve this later on, as was seen on that Superman pack, where it actually has, like, some resistance to it. But I, just overall, I'm not a fan of these stands. I'd much rather put these things on doll stands than take the chance of them falling over and breaking. All right, let's talk about... Oh, let's look at the height of the figure, too. I almost forgot to do that. I don't think I did that in the Superman pack. So he stands about six inches tall to the top of his head, and he's got about another quarter of an inch on those ears. All of these are built on the six-inch scale, which is different than a lot of the DC Direct stuff. They're usually built on the seven-inch scale, but the Batman animated lines were built on six-inch scale, which is kind of cool. That's more a prevalent scale than the seven-inch. Let me turn this around. Looks like Batman's boot is on backwards on this figure. Thankfully, all I have to do is kind of rotate it around, and since the figure foot is on a peg... There, that looks better. That was looking kind of goofy. Uh, let's bring in... I'm going to talk about the articulation in a second. Let's get this one off of this stand. I always put these things on stands, even when I'm doing the review, because I just I don't want to take a chance of something falling over. This is the more popular version of Batman, the original Batman the animated series version. As you can see, it's a major difference in style. You can see where they're... This is born out of this, but it's a very different style. You got a lot of chances of getting the Batman animated style of figure, though. You had the single release. You had the Mask of the Phantasm. You had the ones with the cloth capes that came with the Bat Batmobile Deluxe set or the Bat Signal. You had the Mask of the Phantasm 2-pack, uh, the Batman Adventures Continue version, the version with the Bat Cycle. So there's a lot of releases of this figure. But I think it was just the one release of this. Two if you count taking away the peg holes, but it still counts as the same release. So if you wanted a new Batman Adventures version of Batman, this is your only shot, is getting it carded like that. There's a lot of chances at the Batman animated style, but not a lot of chances at this style. It originally retailed at, what, I think they were 15 bucks when they first came out? I'm talking about not dropping stuff, and here I go, dropping a figure. Um, I think he's not that expensive still. I want to say he's like a $30 or $40 carded figure, which I mean, it's not bad given what all this stuff is going for. All right, let's get this one over here, and we'll talk about articulation, because this cape moves a little easier. He's got ankles that hinge, and then they also pivot on a rocker. So you get some good movement out of that ankle. And then we've got a rotation where the boot meets the leg. We've got one standard hinged knee joint. We've got hips that go up and down. And they actually are pretty good with rotation here. Even though the belt seems like it's restricted, it's pretty darn good. And then they hinge out to there. They're ratcheting too, so they hold a pose. We've got a waist swivel. We've got shoulders that hinge out to there. So not really far, but pretty good. And then they rotate all the way around. You got to rotate them out some for this cape. And again, that's not going to happen with this cape that's meant to go over the shoulders. Then we've got a sh uh, elbow that hinges and then rotates where it enters. And then we've got wrists that peg in. So they rotate there where they peg and then they hinge in and out. And then we've got a really nice movement on the neck here. Actually, this one's a little tighter than the one, the one I just took out. The other one has much more movement. So this one's like moving all over the place. Maybe that's another improvement they did with the peg holes too. I don't know, but this one moves a lot better than that one does. Uh, paintwork is really great. I love the, the flat gray that the whole figure is covered in. The utility belt has a nice beige coloring to it. There's even a small paint app. If we can bring him in close here. There's also a small little paint line where his mouth is, which I think this figure is kind of lacking on that. Because this release of Batman, there was no paint line for his mouth. And it sometimes can get a little lost, that sculpt can. So I, I really like the fact that they gave that small paint line to his mouth there. Overall, very cool figure. It's sort of affordable still in regards, like I said, to the whole DC collectible Batman animated stuff. All the releases of Batman now from the animated ser series, this is like a $50 figure loose every time. Because obviously this is the more popular design. Um, but you need new Batman Adventures Batman if you're going to collect all the new Batman Adventures figures, so this is kind of a must-get. You're going to have to, you're going to have to buy one, and if you're going to buy one, get the one without the pay holes. Just look, take a look online. If you're buying a one carded, make sure these hip holes aren't there because it just makes an overall pleasing figure. Okay, that's it for number one. We've killed out number one. I was going to do red background for all of these, which I totally forgot about, but I actually sort of still like the light blue because it kind of can be headache-inducing, I think, to have all those those red backgrounds. So I'm going to stick with this light blue, I think. Uh, that's it for this one. The next one up is Two-Face. 
Again, I'm gonna be opening the entire line. I'm gonna review the entire line over time. So please stick with me here. If you're enjoying the videos, like, subscribe, notify, and uh, see you guys with the next one.